In our last video, we looked at how to break apart an expression to find the sine or cosine of the sum or difference of two of, of an angle. And so in this video, we're going to do that again, although this problem is a little bit more complicated than when we just took a look at. Uh, first off, right away, you notice that there's a negative angle in here. And I think the first thing that I will do to get rid of that is just use my even odd properties. Remember that we can always change an angle to a positive angle. It's just sometimes you have to pull that negative out front and sometimes you don't. Sine is an example of a case where you do have to pull that negative sign out front. A cosine, you can just get rid of the negative and you don't have to worry about it. So here's what that means right off the bat. Uh, I'm going to make a note. I always forgot to do this when I was doing my notes. Uh, when I'm done with this problem, I need to make sure that my answer becomes the opposite of what it would have been uh, because I pulled out that negative sign. So just keep that in mind and let's not forget that before we finish. We need to make our final answer the opposite. Okay? From here, it'll uh, start to proceed as normal. Uh, before it takes another turn. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, rewrite this in degrees. You don't have to do this step, but I like to do this. So replace pi with 180, and this becomes the opposite of the sine of 165 degrees. And so as we talked about in the last video, I want to try to write 165 as the sum of my special angles, which were 30, 60, and 45. And occasionally we'll use 90. Uh, and so here's where this problem, again, uh, takes a different turn from the, the way the last problem, the last video did. Uh, 165 is not simply the sum of any two of those. So uh, what I have to do, maybe using some guess and check, I can find out that 165 is the same thing as the sine of 60 plus 60 plus 45. If I add all those together, I get 165. But unfortunately, I'm not allowed to use three pieces. And so what I'll do is I'll combine my 60s into just the sine of 120 degrees plus 45 degrees. And so why this problem is going to be different is when I go to break this apart, uh, 45 is not a problem. That's one of the special angles. But 120 is not one of my special angles. So we'll have to see how we're going to work with that in just a moment. So let me go ahead and break this apart. I'm going to ignore that negative sign right now. Remember, just use that at the end. I'm going to break this apart using the formulas we've used, uh, talked about in class. So to break up the sum of sines, that's the same as the sine of angle A times the cosine of angle B. And remember, A and B are just those angles right there. Uh, plus the cosine of angle A, which is 120 and then the sine of angle B, which is 45, okay? And so as we said, those 45s aren't really a problem because I can simply look up the way we've done before, the cosine of 45, the sine of 45 in my trig chart. Uh, the cosine of 45 is square root of two over two. I'll just kind of get this stuff written around it. Uh, and then the sine of 45 is also the square root of two over two. However, for that 120, I need to do something a little bit different. This goes way back to when we did these, uh, we called them the three-step problems from way back when. So if I were to graph 120 degrees, I would see that that angle ends up somewhere in quadrant two. So that's 120 degrees. However, what I'm really more concerned about is the reference angle right there, 60 degrees. And so uh, the way we had done these is we said, well, 120 degree angle is really just a 60 degree angle, but it's in quadrant two. So I'm going to find the sine and cosine of 60 degrees, but then taking a look at what quadrant I'm in, remember this, uh, determine whether that uh, ratio is going to be positive or negative. I'm in the sine quadrant where sines are positive. So anyway, back to our problem. To find the sine of 120, I just find the sine of 60 and make that positive because I'm in the sine quadrant. Uh, the sine of 60 is just uh, square root of 3 over 2. And I make that positive because sine is positive in quadrant 2. To find the cosine of 120, I again just find the cosine of 60, which is a half. But because that's um, cosine and I'm in the sine positive quadrant, that one half becomes negative. Otherwise, this problem would proceed as normal. So from there, uh, like we did in the last video, I'll just simplify the numerator. I'd have the square root of 6 minus the square root of 2, uh, once I multiply on the top. Along the bottom, each of those denominators would be 4, so I'll combine it into a single fraction to get over 4. However, um, don't circle that this because it's not the answer. Remember, I said at the very beginning there's something that we did that we have to take into account, and that was to make our final answer the opposite of what we got because of choosing to pull that negative out front. So what I need to do is, uh, down here for my final answer before I finish, multiply this whole thing times negative 1, or really negative 1 over positive 1. Uh, what's going to happen then is both signs in the numerator will change. Your denominator is not changing because it's just a positive 1 on the bottom. So the denominator stays a, negative, or stays a positive 4. My numerator, numerator then becomes the negative square root of 6 plus the square root of 2. And there is going to be my final answer.